Howdy YouTube, Matt back out in the shop and have I got a strange project for you today. This right here is the switch that goes in an effects pedal for a guitar. And this is an LED holder. And my plan is to take these pieces and mount them in this piece of aluminum use this wood to build some sort of a case for it so that what I have is a five switch pedal board. So the construction of the switches and the wiring of switches and LEDs and all is simple enough. The $50,000 question is what the heck are you gonna do with it once it's built? Well, that's where it gets a little interesting. Uh, what I need to do is I need to grab a little microcontroller, uh, an Arduino variant called a Teensy which will pretty easily allow me to hook up these switches in a way that they can each be programmed to send a particular keyboard shortcut command to my computer. And once the keyboard shortcuts get into the computer, it's a matter of configuring a little helper application and some stuff in GarageBand so that each of these physical switches ends up turning on and off a virtual effects pedal in the computer. I started by marking out a piece of the same two inch aluminum bar stock that I used to make the bracket that's holding the monitor where I'm currently watching myself. And I marked it out two and a half inches in from each end and then in five inch increments. It happens to be a 25 inch long piece. So that gives me five evenly spaced switches with enough room that you can get a foot of <laughs> my size uh, even maybe wearing a, an oversized shoe like a hiking boot or something in between them and reliably hit one and only one switch. I'm going to drill this out over in the drill press and mount the switches and the LED holders before I get around to designing the wooden enclosure that's going to hold the whole thing simply because I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to mount these up and down. Uh, so I don't know how much space I absolutely need on the back side until I get this part put together. I've got all my holes marked and center punched and I've started with the holes for the LED lamp holders for no reason other than that they are a little bit smaller than the ones for the foot switch. I turned the drill press up to 540 RPMs because this aluminum is so soft that if the drill bit isn't spinning fast enough, it tends to grab and lift and tear big chunks out. So you wanna keep the speed up a little bit when you're working with aluminum. Okay, for the foot switch holes, I have to go a full half an inch, which happens to be the largest twist bit that I own. If this were steel, I might, might have felt the need to drill a smaller hole first and then come back and hog out the rest of it in aluminum. I'm not worried about it at all. What I am worried about, though, is this, this big bit attached to this powerful drill press grabbing a hold of that aluminum and just torquing a big piece of it out instead of drilling a nice clean hole. So I have it clamped down here at the one end and on the other end where I can't really get a clamp in because I haven't shelled out for the step clamps that attach to this table. I just have a board that's cantilevered off the end of the press over here that's clamped down. Joy of aluminum, folks. Once all the machining is done on the aluminum, you can hit it with a flap disc just to take any little burrs off of it, clean the oxide off if you want, keep the edges from getting too sharp, stuff like that. And then the foot switches screw into the big holes and the LED lamp holders screw into the small ones. They actually have a pretty long thread on them. So there are two nuts, one for the back and one for the front. And you have to kind of you know, guess a little bit to make sure that you get them all set at the same height. But this is what it, uh, this is what it looks like, and this is, of course, where your foot's going to go, and then the light will come on here. So I, what I want for this thing is I want it to sit on the floor, but I want it to sit at a little bit of an angle. It could sit flat. A lot of guitar stomp boxes do just have a square shape and sit on the floor. It would work like this. 
But if you want to do it right, we're going to build it the way they would build a pedal board, which is about maybe a 10 or 15 degree angle. What we need to cut are some weirdo blocks like this. This guy right here, this is my prototype for the front of the pedal board. This is cut at a 15 degree angle across the top, and then it has a rabbit that sunk at the same 15 degree angle. So the top of the rabbit and the top of the board are parallel to each other, just, just offset a little bit. And that rabbit is deep enough for the switches on their aluminum plate to sit in there like so. And then this whole thing sits flat on the floor, and there you go, there's the, there's the front of your pedal board. It also has a rabbit that is square on the back of it for this, which is going to be the bottom of it, but it's, it's inset so that when it sits on the floor, it's going to be sitting actually on the edge of the front side and back pieces, and it'll, it'll have a bottom on it, but that's more of a dust cover than anything. So that's, that's my prototype just to give me the, the dimensions for the height and the angles and such things. So what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and cut out some strips that are big enough to be the final pieces and go about cutting this profile on the front one and similar but backwards profile on the, the rear piece. It's going to have this same angle, but the angled rabbit's going to need to be on the short side and the groove for the base is going to need to be on the front. Here's the rough stock for my front and for my back. The first thing I'm going to do is run them through the blade tip to 15 degrees, cut the total bevel angle, and then I'll come back, lower the blade, sneak the fence in, and cut the rabbit that's angled for the switch plate. I want to do all of that work before I begin my sort of final dimensioning of these things, simply because it's going to be a whole lot easier to sneak up on exactly the right dimension with the blade square than trying to do it on the angled side. All right, with the primary angle cut on my front and back piece, now what I'm going to do is come back here and use my prototype to set the height of the blade to cut that slot. And what I'm going to do here is essentially raise the blade until I just manage to wiggle it back and forth with this thing and then drop it one half of one tick. Now, caution is warranted here to make sure I don't do this in the wrong order. On the piece that's going to be the back of the pedal board, the rabbit for the switch plate goes on the, we'll call it the short end of the bevel. And that means I need to cut it with the fence to the right of the blade. However, for the piece that's going to be in the front, I need that rabbit to be on the high side of the bevel. And so for that, I'm going to have to take the fence off and put it over here on the quote unquote wrong side of the blade so that I can, uh, can cut this piece with the, with the teeth where I need to remove the stock. Yes, that does mean that I'm going to have this pinched between the angle that the blade is tilted and the fence, but I'm only essentially removing a blade's width of stock and, and about yo deep, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's cut this one first since the fence is on the, the right side. All I'm going to do is sneak this over here. I'm taking off one tooth worth of wood. All right, that worked out great. What I need to do is bump the fence over so that I can take one more blade's width. Uh, this is one of those occasions where having the thin kerf blade is kind of a pain. If I had a, a full eighth blade, well, if I had a full eighth blade, probably one pass would have done it. But at a minimum, if I wanted to move the fence, I could do it with the tape. Uh, with this thing, a little bit of trial and error. All right, that came out pretty well. The rabbit that's left by making multiple passes with the blade, especially on an angle, doesn't leave you exactly the flattest and uh, you know, unwaviest thing ever. But it's nothing that one pass with a block plane can't clean up. All right, maybe two or three. It's the same process for milling the rabbit on the other piece. As I mentioned earlier, had to move the fence to the other side of the blade, 
and I had to make sure to flip the piece end for end so that the bevel matches up with the direction of the blade. While you're sneaking the fence over for the second rabbit, you want to make sure it ends up the same depth as the first one. The easy way to do that is to just take these two pieces, because the bevels are complementary, they'll, they'll line right up perfectly, and then your two rabbits should form one perfect dado that's all at exactly the same depth. This is the piece that's going to be the front of the pedal board, and I cut it to the same width as my prototype piece. I have the switch plate clamped in here and the whole thing clamped down to the workbench because I need to figure out how wide, this way, to make the back piece. I already have the rabbit cut on it, but as you can see right now, it's too tall. It won't slide underneath the switchboard. And it seems to be about, oh, I don't know, the thickness of the aluminum, which is one eighth. I'm gonna go take an eighth of an inch off the square end of the bottom of this and come back and it should slip under there just beautiful. Okay, with one eighth of an inch gone, that's pretty right there. It's like a glove. After I finished cutting the back to height, I went ahead and I put these square rabbits that are gonna hold the bottom of the foot pedal in place. I don't care exactly what this measurement is, but I'd like the bottom to fit reasonably well. So instead of trying to measure it with a ruler, I'm just gonna take ye old uh, compass and put it in here until I'm happy with the width. And then I'll take this over to the table saw and use it to set the fence. Originally for the end pieces, I had visions of mitering these corners and building a thing that had a, a matching rabbit on the inside. But since all the pressure on the foot pedals is straight down, I wanted as much support underneath as possible. I ended up making blocks that are the same kind of wedge shaped as the, the rabbits, so that when this is all assembled, the end will be flush and I'll have a full three quarters of an inch surface area underneath here. I have another one of these for the other end and I actually made one for the middle. I'm gonna end up having to drill a hole in the one for the middle to let the wiring through. All right, to start the glue up of this thing, I'm gonna glue the angled pieces in the sides. And I'm using the bottom as a guide to make sure I have the whole thing lined up, but I don't have the bottom glued in yet. And among other things, what I'm checking for here is to make sure that I've got this piece in square to that bottom. So you notice here on the other end, I don't have everything cut to length. Um, that's because rather than trying to cut all of these things to exactly the same length independently, I decided to just go ahead and glue it up I'm going to stick the entire thing in the table saw sled and chop off the end all at one time. And here's my one with a hole in it so that I can get wires through it later. I made a mark on here so I would know where to put this block in to make sure that it didn't interfere with one of the buttons. Now to glue the actual bottom in, I'm just going to run a light bead along here. I'm going to try and get this lined up pretty much exact on this end. And to hold the bottom, I'm just gonna put a few brads in where those cross blocks are. A Little bit of sanding, a couple of coats of gloss black paint, and voila, one pedal board is born. I drilled and countersunk some holes on the two ends to mount the aluminum strip to those triangular pieces I put in there. We'll see whether I need the one in the, in the middle or not. If when I screw this down, the middle hooves up a little bit, I can always add one, one screw right in here where that other block is, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. The paint's not completely dry, so I'm gonna call it a day for this. Once it all sets up, we'll get back together and we'll wire this up and I will show you how the Teensy microcontroller works and how you turn a couple of keyboard inputs into something useful in the GarageBand app for Mac OS X. Until then, stay safe, YouTube. See you next time.